Hi, boys and girls. My name is Miss Jennifer. I am a teaching artist in the PACE Art Program. The PACE Program is an arts integration program at the Acadiana Center for the Arts and the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. And today, we are going to be learning about pandas, where pandas live, and what pandas eat. So let's go ahead and let's get our supplies so that we can get started on this lesson. Here, I have a sheet of white paper that is eight inches by eight inches. I also have a pencil that we're going to be using. We're going to be using a ruler, and you might ask, what are we gonna do with this ruler? We're gonna use this ruler to help us draw today. You are also going to need a black marker. Now I have a very thin marker and a very thick marker. We're going to be coloring quite a bit of our panza with this black marker today. So let's just make sure that you have a black marker that works really well, okay? If you don't have a marker, you could always use a black crayon to do this and that will also work. The next thing that we're going to be using are crayons. You will need a yellow, an orange, green, and notice I have a dark green, a medium green, and a light green. So if you have even more greens, get them all out. That will work. We will be using a brown crayon and we will also be using a black crayon. And again, if you don't have black markers, use your crayon instead. Now, some of you might have some of these fancy twistable colors. And if you want to use these colors, you may go ahead and do that also. You can maybe use these colors and these colors together. It's really up to you. All right, so let's stop the video, get your supplies. When you are ready, press play, and I will be here to continue this little lesson with you. So boys and girls, we're gonna start out today by talking about pandas. I'm going to share some fun facts about pandas before we get started with our drawing today. Did you know that pandas mainly live in China? They are usually about 300 pounds. Wow, that's pretty heavy for a panda. And pandas eat bamboo. Now in order for a panda to have all of the vitamins and nutrients that it needs in order to grow, it needs to have more than one kind of bamboo. So in the areas that they live, there is more than one kind of bamboo. And so they go back and forth eating one kind and then eating another. Pandas are pretty amazing in that they have an extra thumb. That extra thumb kind of grows on the side of their little paws right here. And that's what helps them to grab and hold on tight to the bamboo that they are going to be eating. They have to pull really hard with their mouths in order to break apart that bamboo. Newborn baby pandas are tiny. They're also blind and pink. And so this is a baby panda. Look how cute. And so again, they're blind when they are born. They have very little hair on them, but over time they'll start to get these really dark black and white colors. The giant panda is um, a native of, as I said, China. They're actually in South Central China, and they're known for their large black and white patches of fur. Pandas like to live in the mountain areas, and they like the weather to be sort of cool. They don't really like it if it's hot. And pandas' teeth are very, very sharp. Their teeth are sharp so that they can crush the bamboo plants with their teeth because the bamboo plants are very, very hard to chew. And so, as you can see, here is a very large panda. And here is another one. This panda is sort of holding onto a tree. And this is a baby panda here. And here's another baby. And as you can see right here, it is sitting, or should I say, climbing a tree. Here is a panda eating bamboo. 
Bamboo, again, is what they eat. And so here you can see he's tearing it apart with those sharp teeth that he has. All right, and so here again, here is the baby. And here is another panda. As you can see, the panda has a lot of black and white spots. And we're going to be making a panda today. We're going to actually be making a drawing of a panda. Now pandas, again, like to eat bamboo. These are bamboo plants. Bamboo plants have leaves, and then they have these like hard stems right here. And this is what the panda eats. Here is another picture, and this is what they look like in nature. Nature, of course, is what we see outside. This picture Miss Jennifer took uh, that are right um, next to my house, um, and I thought you would like to see what they look like in real life. And so, let's go ahead and let's get ready to start our panda drawing. I'm going to put my panda back on the top so that you can see the panda. And this is what we're going to be doing today, boys and girls. We are going to be drawing the panda. And we're also going to be making bamboo on our picture today because the panda likes to eat bamboo. All right, and so let's go ahead and let's get started please make sure that you have your supplies that you need and if you do not have that now go ahead and pause the video get what you need and press play when you're ready to begin all right boys and girls i am now ready to start working on the drawing part of this lesson with you as you can see I do a vertical line going from top to bottom and a horizontal line going from side to side. That is what's going to help us draw our panda today. And so here I have a white piece of paper. You're going to take your paper and you're going to fold it in half so your corners are touching. And there you go. So now I folded it in half. Then I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to fold it the opposite way. And now I have a fold going this way and a fold going this way, this way and this way. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and my pencil and right along the folded line, I am going to draw right over the folds and now I have divided my paper into four equal parts. <clears throat> Next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be using some dots on our paper. I'm going to be drawing with my thin Sharpie marker today. If you feel you want to draw it with your pencil first and then go back and trace it, that is okay with Miss Jennifer. Alright, so we're going to start off first and on that line that we drew, about right here, we're going to make two dots, making sure they're about the same um, size on both sides of the line. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to circle those dots and we now have his what? Boys and girls, you guessed it, we have his eyes. Very good. Now the next thing that we're going to be doing is up on the top of our paper, about right here, we're going to put a dot. We're going to start from about right here, and we're going to make a curved line on this side, and a curved line on this side. That is the top of his head. Then we're going to, from that dot, we're going to go all the way down to this line. Notice that I made my line a little bit straighter. It's still curved, but it's a little bit straighter on this side. 
and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And so here I go. There I go. That is the top of my panda's head. Now about right here, I'm going to make this really big curved line. And what do you think that might be, boys and girls? If you said his ear, you guessed it right. Now we know that he has two ears, so we have to do the same thing on the other side. And so here we go. We're doing another one. If they're not exactly the same, don't worry about it. It is okay. So now we have the top of his head done. And now we want to start working on the bottom part of his face. So we're going to come down to about right here. And we're going to put a dot. I'm making sure you're only leaving a little bit at the end of the paper. And the next thing we're going to do is right on top of that dot, we're going to make another dot. <clears throat> on the second dot, we want to draw a straight line going across. Then we're going to start about right here and we want to draw an upside down triangle. You can also color this part in while you are working on it. And if you want, you can also make the corners maybe a little bit rounder for his nose so they're not so pointed. And there we go. There's his nose. The next part, from this dot to his nose, we're going to color in a black thick line. Alright, the next part that we're going to do is we're going to make a curve going this way and a curve going this way. This is going to be his mouth. We're also going to need another curve here and another curve here and then simply color it in because his nose and his mouth are black. There you go. All right, right underneath his mouth, we're gonna put another dot. And then this time we wanna go from this dot to this end of this line right here. And you're going to make sort of a curved line going up to the line that you had before. And that is the side of his face. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. And so, there you go. There's the other side of his face. How's it going, boys and girls? Good job. If you need some time, remember, you could always pause the video and then press play when you're ready to begin again. All right, so the next thing that we need to do now is we need to work on his face. We're going to do something else around his face. So if you look carefully here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a straight line going up to this eye and sort of a straight line going up to this eye, just like this. Now take that part and come up around to the top of the eye and do that on the other side. And there we go. And that part, Will also be black. So we may color it in now. I messed up on his eye a little bit, so I'm just going to fix that. Nice thing about this is you can fix it as you go. Okay, so there's one eye, and I'm not going to color the other one. We're almost there.
Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start about right here, and we want to make a curved line that sort of touches the top of this eye. We're going to do the same thing starting at the bottom, and we want to make that curved line touching the top of this eye. While you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and color in my ears. And you know what, actually, I think I'm going to get my big marker, my squeaky marker that is, and I'm going to color this in since it's a larger section. And there's one ear. Don't worry if you go out of the lines a little bit. It's okay, my friends, because we're going to be cutting this out. And so it's not going to matter. I'm going to turn my paper a little bit just so that I can color in my ear. And there it goes. Mess up a little bit. Just go back and fix it. There we go. Alright. So now I have my ears. And there is something else that we need to do. We need to make the sides of his body so about right here, we're going to just make a curve going this way and maybe a curve going this way. The next thing that we're going to need to do, boys and girls, is we're going to need to color this part of his body with our black. <clears throat> and so Miss Jennifer doesn't get it on my tablecloth, I'm going to put a construction paper, I mean, I'm sorry, a cardboard piece underneath. And here I go. I'm now going to color in the rest of my paper all the way to the bottom from its head to the bottom of the paper. If you need time, again, pause the video. When you're ready, come back, press play, and I will be here for you. Now you might have to color over and over a little bit, boys and girls, because as you can see, I have sort of some um, light black spots on my paper, and that's okay. That's just when you color fast, sometimes it happens. But you can go back and you can keep just coloring it as dark as you need it to be. All right, so there is one side as you can see and I'm about to color the other side all right how is yours coming out are you getting all this black done Sure hope so. Alright, I'm gonna turn my paper again. I think Miss Jennifer's marker is running out, but I'm gonna just make it work. If yours starts to run out and you don't have any more black marker. And you could simply use crayons to finish coloring what's left. Alright. And I'm going to go back and color over some of my white. And there I go. Alright, boys and girls. There are two things that Miss Jennifer forgot to tell you that we're going to need today when we talked about supplies. And that is, we're going to need just a regular sheet of paper. This is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and a pair of scissors. So why don't you stop the video now, pause it, gather your paper and scissors, and then come back and meet me. I'll be right here waiting for you. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do, boys and girls, is I'm going to cut out my panda. And I'm going to cut along the outside edge of my panda 
taking my time trying to stay on top of the line. Or should I stay on the edge of the line? With your scissors. And there I go. I now have my panda cut out. Scraps will just go on the side to let those linger. And so the next thing we'll be doing is we'll be putting our panda onto this large paper. But we want to talk about his habitat. The habitat is a place in which our animal lives. And we know that our animal needs food to survive. Does anybody remember what kind of food Miss Jennifer said that the pandas eat? If you said bamboo, then you are correct. They eat bamboo. Remember, more than one kind of bamboo in a day. So we will be making pam bamboo on our white paper. And for that, we're going to be using our crayons that I talked about earlier. And here are my crayons. All right, so I'm gonna clear out some of my area here. And I'm ready to get started. All right, I'm gonna put my paper on my cardboard. And here we go. If you look carefully, at this bamboo plant, you will see that the bamboo plant has these long leaves, but they also have these tall, thick, hard stems. On each stem, there is a little brown line, and that's kind of where each part of the plant keeps growing and growing. It makes this like little ring around the plant. So we're definitely going to be doing that today. All right, so move this over. Let's see if we can get some of our bamboo picture to show. And there we go. All right. Now let's get started. So I'm going to start off first, boys and girls, by using my dark green. And all I want to do is I want to use some straight lines. And I want to go all the way to the top. That is one piece of bamboo. And then... You can, sometimes bamboo also kind of turns to the side, just like this. And remember, it has those little parts that are kind of like those little curved lines. So we can add curved lines up our bamboo. And I'm gonna do that to the other piece that I just drew here. And the idea for this, boys and girls, is to have bamboo on both sides of your panda. So here, I'm going to draw another piece of bamboo, making my lines as we go. Some of your lines can be straight, some of them can be sort of like a curved line. And I'm going to make one more here, making sure to go back and put those straight lines or curved lines right on your bamboo. And so there we go. All right. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take your dark green. And you're going to kind of color some of this. But you're not going to color all of it. We're going to add some other colors. All right. So there we go. I have some of my colors. And I'm sort of coloring a little darker next to those little um, brown pieces. And we're going to color this brown in just a little bit because I want to make them sort of look like it's darker along that part. All right, so there's one. And do the same thing to the next one. You can cut a little bit more. Now the sides of your bamboo, you might want a little bit darker. I think Miss Jennifer's cardboard piece that's underneath is keeping me from drawing them very straight but that's okay and so that's one side and now I want to go back and I want to on this side add the second little line that I didn't put on my bamboo just like this again doing the same thing coloring it in with some green putting some dark green right above those little brown sections where the bamboo started 
grows and connects together. There you go. And I'm going to do the same thing to this side. How's it going, boys and girls? How's your bamboo? Is it nice and tall? I bet it is. All right. All right, so now I've finished coloring the dark green. And now I think I want to color it in with some light green. You could actually use a little maybe yellow right here. If you don't have light green, that would be perfectly fine. Because if you look here, not all the bamboo is dark green. There are some lighter areas on our bamboo. And so there we go. You could always go back and you could add some dark green if you need some in places. It's really up to you. Okay, here I think I wanna go back. And I'm gonna make, while you're coloring, I want to make a little bit of my bamboo on the edges a little bit darker. Just like this. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. So when you finish coloring, oops, you can go back and if you want to make those lines a little bit darker, you definitely can do that. All right. And so there you go. Remember, we talked about that brown. And right here, we have a little bit of brown on each of these little sections. And so here, you can go back and you can add some brown to those little lines that you made. Just like this. Now, Miss Jennifer is not going to be coloring the background. The background is the part that's going to be behind the panda, which is this piece of paper. But if you want to take the time and you want to color this maybe blue and you want to put maybe a sun and some clouds um, in the ground, you can definitely do that. But for today, I am not going to make the background part of my picture. I want to leave mine white. All right, you can go back and you can also add some orange kind of here and there because sometimes the plant is not always bright green and you might see a little orange on your plants. You do it back to both sides. And if you don't want the orange, it's, that's okay. Just don't put it. All right, and there we go. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the black crayon and I kind of want to make a few of my lines a little bit darker, kind of here and there, just like this. And so those little lines, my bamboo will show a little bit more. You can also, if you want, you could also trace the outside of your bamboo a little bit with the black and that will be okay. Remembering, pandas eat lots of bamboo. They eat all day long. And it takes a lot of bamboo to fill these pandas up because all they're doing is eating these plants. And so remember that the pandas eat a lot of bamboo. All right, and I'm gonna finish tracing the outside. Remember, you can go back. You can add some black to those little brown parts of your bamboo, just like this. And even maybe if you want to maybe make it a little bit darker in some places, you can also go back and you can do that, just like this. That also makes it look nice. All right, now let me do my last one. Again, remembering that if you need to catch up and you need some time, you may pause this video at any time that you are finished 
you may press play and I will be right here waiting for you. And so I am just about finished with my bamboo now. And there I go. All right. The next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting a panda on our bamboo. And there you go. Isn't that nice? I want to do a few more things before I do that though. If you remember, I talked about this bamboo having these leaves. I want to add some leaves to my bamboo. So here I'm going to just kind of make some leaves. And leaves on bamboo are sort of skinny, just like this. They're not very wide. And I'll make one more here. And there you go, and I'll color it in. my green making sure not to color too dark because you can always come back and you can always add some other colors to this also so there you go I'm going to now take my black and I want to trace around my leaves maybe I can add a little black to my leaves also put as many leaves in your picture as you would like. You can put some yellow if you want. You could go back. You could put some orange. You could put some brown. And there you go. There are the leaves of my bamboo. Now that I have finished my bamboo, boys and girls, I am going to take my panda and I'm going to turn my panda over and I want to put glue on the back of my panda, making sure not to put too much glue. You just want to put a little bit kind of here and there and along the edges for your panda to glue onto your bamboo. All right, and then you're going to glue your panda down to the bottom. And there we have it, boys and girls. We have our little panda in his natural habitat. If you want, you can also take an eraser once you're finished. And if you want to erase those pencil lines on the panda's face, if you remember those lines that we used to help us draw, you can also do that too. And there you go. So here is our panda in his natural habitat. And in his habitat, the place in which he lives, he has food. And that is his bamboo. All right, and so we are done with our drawing for today, boys and girls. I hope that you enjoyed doing this, and if you want to spend a little bit more time coloring, then you definitely can do that. Maybe if you can take your marker, make your black a little bit darker, and hey, what about making another one? Maybe you can show your friends or your parents and have fun making this little lesson again. Boys and girls, I would love to see your panda pictures today. So maybe you can get an adult to take a picture of you and put it on Facebook, making sure to tag the Acadiana Center for the Arts so that I can see your lesson for today. Also, maybe other students that share their art will love to see what you did today. So again, post your picture on Facebook, tag the Acadiana Center for the Arts, and let's see what everyone is doing today. And I hope that you had fun making your panda with me. And I also hope that you will come back and see us tomorrow to create more art. We will be posting videos at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time for kindergarten, first, and second grade. Each lesson will connect to the academic curriculum. Some lessons will be in visual arts and some will be in creative movement. So again, come back and make art with us tomorrow. If you are interested in donating to programs like this, the, you can donate to the Acadiana Center for the Arts, the nonprofit that manages the PACE program, using the link in the description. Help us keep teaching artists working and share our videos. And let's keep making art. Want more? 
If you are interested in taking private lessons with me online, then please shoot me an email at j-e-n-j-a-z-d-a-z -A -A at yahoo.com and I will be more than happy to do art with you. I can lead one-on-one -on -one lessons. Maybe you have a brother and sister. Maybe we can do it together and also groups of children.